Today we're going to build a camera gallery app. We're going to be using AWS Amplify, which is a tool set that allows us to build things much quicker than we would if we had to implement it ourselves. So what we'll do is we'll use data store, which will allow us to save some data and storage, which allows us to save files. And we're going to be using that in conjunction with the ability to select a photo or take a photo. And we'll actually be sending that photo up to our back end, and then we'll be able to view it in our gallery. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna kick things off by running amplify init. Then I'll enter all the default values by simply pressing enter for each question that I'm asked. Now let's run amplify add storage so that we can actually save our images somewhere. We also need to add auth to our project in order to use storage. So I'm going to go through the auth configuration as well. We won't be having any authenticated users, but it's important that we allow all access for authenticated and guest users just to make sure that we're able to access the images once they're uploaded. Let's go ahead and run amplify add API. Now I'm going to once again, enter in all the default values for the configuration on the API. Let's go ahead and update the schema while we're at it. I'm gonna be using a post object, which is going to have an ID and an image key. The image key will be the same key that we use to store our file inside of our bucket. Now we actually need to run Amplify API update so that we can actually say that we're going to be using data store with API. If we don't do this step, then we won't actually be able to communicate with the API. Now run amplify code gen models so that we can actually create the models that are part of our GraphQL schema. In this case, it's going to be the post model. So our configuration is pretty much done. Let's just go ahead and send that configuration to our backend by running amplify push. We can see here that we have auth storage and API all configured and created. And then we have a couple of questions that I'm just once again, going to submit the default answer by pressing enter. So now if we take a look at our project's root directory, we can see all the different files and folders that have been created for us by the Amplify CLI. Now we are going to actually need to add the Amplify configuration file and the AWS configuration file to our project, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now it's pod init time. So let's go ahead and open up our pod file. So we have the platform set to iOS 14, and then we also are bringing in Amplify and Amplify plugins. We're gonna be using Cognito and S3. We're gonna also be using API and Data Store. Now let's simply run pod install repo update and open up our project's workspace. Let's go ahead and add the AWS configuration file and the Amplify configuration file to our project. Let's make sure that we also add our generated models. So I'm going to go to the amplify folder and I'm going to also select under the generated folder is a models folder. I'm going to make sure that I create groups for that folder and add it to my project. Now we simply start off by doing import amplify and import amplify plugins inside of our app object so that we can use amplify. Then we create a new function called configure amplify, which is going to essentially set up our amplify configuration. We're going to be using the Cognito auth plugin as well as the S3 storage plugin to make sure that we're able to upload images to our bucket. We'll also be using the API plugin as well as the data store plugin. And both of those require an instance of our amplify models object, which was generated for us. Last, we call it Amplify Configure, and if everything works out, then we know that we're awesome and we're gonna get something logged in our console. Finally, we just need to make sure we call Configure Amplify, so let's add that in our init method and make sure that it's called before we attempt to use Amplify in our project. And boom, as you can see, configured Amplify successfully. Oh yeah. So now let's go ahead and add a camera view object as well as a gallery view object. And we're going to throw those into our window group. We're going to actually place them inside of a tab view and we're going to be able to switch between the two. Now the camera view will have a tab item of a camera and the gallery view will have a tab item of a photo on rectangle. And that's going to allow us to switch between the two different views. Heading over to our camera view, we know that we're gonna be using Amplify, so let's go ahead and import it at the top. 
Next, let's go ahead and start working on the body and add in the button. Now the button is going to have an image called camera and we're just gonna add a couple of different stylings and modifiers to just make that image look a little bit sexier. We also need to make sure that we have a function that's going to handle our button tap. So let's go ahead and create a function called did tap button. Let's set did tap button as the action for our button. The button's gonna be responsible for showing our image picker. So let's go ahead and add a Boolean that we can toggle between whenever it's time to show the image picker. Now we can add a sheet that will be presented and tied to our should show image picker Boolean and it will present the image picker whenever it's toggled. However, we don't have the image picker object, so let's go ahead and create that now. Image picker needs to conform to UI view controller representable, and we can do that by type aliasing UI view controller type and setting that to UI image picker controller. From there, we just need to add in the remaining protocol stubs. In make UI view controller, we're just going to return an instance of our UI image picker controller. The image picker will have a binding property on it called image, which will be passed in by our camera view. And it will also have an environment variable called presentation mode, which will allow us to dismiss the image picker once we're done picking an image. Let's go ahead and create an image picker coordinator, which will act as our delegate for our UI image picker controller. We'll make image picker one of the properties of the image picker coordinator so that we can interact with the presentation mode and the binding image. If the user decides to cancel while the image picker is showing, then we're going to make sure that we set the presentation mode to dismiss. If the user did finish picking their image, we also need to call dismiss so that the image picker can go away. But what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have access to the image and we update the binding image of our image picker. Now back in our image picker, we can create an instance of our image picker coordinator and set that as the coordinator of the image picker. Then in make UI view controller, we can actually access that coordinator by using context.coordinator and set that as the delegate of our controller. In our info.plist, we're gonna make sure that we specify that we need access to the photo library and the camera as well. Back in our camera view, we can now add our image picker to our sheet as the content. And all we need to do is pass in a state property called image so that it can be bound inside of our image picker. Now we can wrap our button inside of a V stack and we can surround it by spacers so that it's always centered. We'll actually check if self.image is nil or not. If it has a value, then we can pass that into an image, which we can then display. Ooh, now that is some good picking. So instead of showing the image picker again, if we already have an image, let's go ahead and update it so that we actually upload an image instead of showing the picker again, if we do have a value for that image. Let's go ahead and create an upload image function, which we can then call if we have an image when we tap the button. We're gonna need the image data from the image and the key. Then we just simply pass the key and the image data into storage.upload data. We get back a Swift result, which has a success case and a failure case. If we are successful in uploading the image, then what we wanna do is then save that image to a post. Let's create a save post method that we can call from inside of our success block of the upload data. We can then create a post from the same image key that we passed in when we were uploading the image data to storage. Now we can focus on the functionality of the save function. So let's go ahead and call amplify.datastore.savePost. And as usual, we'll receive a result, which we can check the success or failure. If we do get a success, then we can just simply set the image to nil. So then it's no longer displayed inside of our camera view. Heading back to the top, let's make sure that our button is only showing the camera if we haven't selected an image, but if it has selected an image, let's show an upload icon. So now when we hit the button and select an image, we notice that the button icon changes to an upload icon. When we hit the upload icon, we notice that the image actually gets uploaded to storage and the post gets saved. Now let's focus on the gallery view. So we're gonna to need to work with Amplify on this page. So let's go ahead and import Amplify here too. 
Then what we need to do is we need to create a get posts function. We'll do data store.query and we'll pass in post.self to indicate that we want only posts. As usual, we receive a result and it has a success and a failure. If we get a success, then what we need to do is download the images. We can create a separate function that's responsible for downloading the images that are associated with each post. So we'll accept in an array of posts, then we can loop over each of those posts. We're gonna take the post.image key and pass that into storage.downloadData. Then we'll be able to get back the result of that function and each result will contain the image data. We're also going to need a way to hang on to each of the images that are downloaded. So I'll create a dictionary that's going to hang on to each of those images that are associated with the keys. Now this isn't the best way to do it, but it's a quick way to do it. Now we can head back down to our download images function, make sure that we return to the main thread, and then we update our dictionary with the image that we created from the image data. We can now go back up to our body and update it to present a list instead of just some plain text. As long as we have a legit UI image for that key, we can pass that UI image into our body and create a Swift UI image from that UI image. Then we just need to make it a little bit sexy so that it shows up properly on our screen. Let's also make sure that we do get posts in our on appear method of our list. So with get post and on appear, we're only getting posts once, and this is not going to be reactive to whenever we upload a new post. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an observer and we're going to listen for new posts. So let's go ahead and import combine. Then what we can do is we can scroll down to the bottom of the screen and create a new function called observe post. We'll be working with a publisher here. So I'm going to create a new property called token, which will hang on to the sync of my publisher. I'm just gonna go ahead and print out the completion value here, but this is where you would normally handle any errors or the completion of the stream. Now that I have the event, I can try to decode the associated model into a post. From there, I could pass that post into our download images function as a single array, and that should update my image cache as well as download the image associated with that key. Then we need to go back up to the on appear and make sure that we're calling observe posts as well. And before we wrap it all up, let's just make sure that we're calling download images inside of the success block of our data store.query call. All right, and there you have it, a camera gallery app built using AWS Amplify. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to help. If you are you know, getting very enthusiastic about AWS Amplify and you're starting to create a little bit of content around it the way that I am, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to uh, get in contact with you. Now go out there, amplify your project, and keep coding passionately.